guys, welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast, which is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and making it work as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. So my name is Carmen. Um, this is the New Leaf Podcast. I already said that. My website is newleafdesigns.nl, and it's been a while, so I'm not sure what I'm doing. Um, it's my last podcast episode was in May. So I don't even know, is that, that's five months ago. Um, I did do some daily vlogs in September, but um, yeah, it was really different from the podcast. So anyway, I'm back with a podcast episode and lots of knitting, although I have narrowed it down a little bit because otherwise I'd be here for hours. So um Oh, first, before I say, any, say anything else, um, please do give this video a thumbs up if you like it. It really helps out the channel. And when I was checking my fancy YouTube studio behind the scenes, blah, blah, uh, I saw that only, um, or that 70% of people who watch my videos are non-subscribers. So please do check if you're also subscribed to the channel. I know I do that a lot. I watch... Uh, some channels videos I watch a lot of them and then I see I'm not even subscribed because YouTube just keeps recommending it to me so I um, still see a lot of their videos anyway <laughs> last time I was showing you my around the world sweater which is um, my first sweater pattern actually well not my first this is actually it was actually my third <laughs> But uh, the first sweater pattern that I um, put a lot of work in grading, um, it's not perfect yet, I still have to fix some things. But uh, that was last time, uh, and I was working on my second sample for that. Um, I'll just pop a picture in here. Uh, so I had published the pattern, I was working on my second sample, and I have now almost <laughs> finished that sample. Yes, I am very slow um, knitting in summertime, uh, but now I'm getting back to it. And I'll share more of that next episode because uh, I want to keep these fairly short. Um, you will know if I succeeded by seeing the length of this video. This time I'm going to chat all about my next upcoming ebook or actually my first ever ebook which is going to be the subtle sock collection the subtle sock collection so i started um i just i noticed that i hadn't really published a new sock pattern this year except for the one that i designed last year but that just came out in uh, Scapius Yarn Bookazine, uh, issue 10. And I'm just gonna quickly show you, it's such a beautiful issue. So it's um, color themed. And yes, here they are. So I designed these uh, Red Panda socks for kids. And they're super cute. It's not color work, it's, um, well, it might be color work, but it's duplicate stitched, so it's not stranded color work. And yeah, just uh, super cute. So I had designed that last year. Um, it's Escape Piece Yarn 10 Bookazine, by the way. You can get it at Escape Piece Retailers, Wool Warehouse, Black Sheep Wools, uh, Dara Morris, I think. Here in the Netherlands, you can get it at Caro's Atelier and many, many other stores. Um, so that was one of my last sock designs. Um, and I might even have designed one after that, the um, blinking lights. No, um, <laughs> I got my own pattern name wrong. The One Blink for Yes Socks, which is my Stranger Things inspired um, sock pattern. I'll again I'll put a picture up. It's uh, inspired by the scene where Joyce talks uh, through the blinking Christmas lights. And yeah, I thought it would be like a kind of spooky, creepy, 
Christmassy, Halloweeny type sock pattern. But uh, I think that was my last one, and um, I found that weird because I think of myself as a designer of mostly sock patterns, but um, I haven't designed that many sock patterns. <laughs> Uh, so I thought to rectify that, taking it back to the first pattern of the Subtle Sock Collection. And so the Subtle Sock Collection is going to be an ebook collection of four sock patterns, and all of them are color work, and all of them have the same construction. They are toe up, they have a stripy gusset. To give you some more room in the instep, uh, then a short row heel and a heel flap. Yes, toe up heel flap. Yes, <laughs> um, and I really like the fit of these. Um, I'll show you more up close later. Um, so, this was the first pattern. I'm losing my train of thought, but um, I don't know if I um, had just the idea of one sock pattern or, or if I had the ebook idea at the at the beginning because you know with the realization that I didn't have a lot of sock patterns I thought okay well I love color work socks why not uh, design uh, another color work sock pattern um, and then I think I had several ideas so I just thought to do them all <laughs> um, but yeah, this was the first one, and this was the first sock that I did, and you know they started to um, they are toe up socks, so it started here, and then um, I got here, and I thought, okay, is this gonna be enough contrast? Because it's not a lot of contrast, so um, yeah. I decided I was gonna go ahead anyway and then since I'm using a variegated yarn as the background color here and luckily it got lighter so here you're able to see the pattern much better and then for the second sock it was much lighter see so you can uh, see the pattern much better on the second sock and it is a kind of uh, diamond pattern and it's it's a really easy um, repetitive pattern uh, easily memorable and um, yeah I really like it so that was the first one and the yarn that I use is I'm just showing you different colors here uh, it's Scapius Metropolis there's a little bit of a glare on the screen Scapius Metropolis and um, this is in the Molton colorway uh, which is colorway number 17 and then the background color I actually do have a bowl of that the background color is Scapius Art Tribe again <laughs> with the glare Scapius Art Tribe uh, and the Cypress Textiles colorway, which is 970. And it's beautiful. <laughs> so beautiful. Um, so yeah, I think um, I think when I look when I paired the colors, I thought, okay, well, um, I thought, okay, well, that's gonna be contrasting enough. And then I probably just uh, started at a, a darker patch in the um, variegated colorway so so I knew it was going to be lighter um, and I'm really pleased that it got to be this light but yes because it was such a low contrast pairing uh, really subtle and uh, I named it my subtle sock and uh, I shared it on this um, Facebook group for sock knitting that I'm in and people seem to really like it um, so I um, I was inspired um, and I thought okay I'll do a whole collection I'll do the uh, subtle sock collection so yes the subtle sock collection was born um, I'll just show you the other patterns as well this is the second pattern 
which is also very low contrast you know it was deliberative uh, although here it's really really low contrast so um, I guess you also have to kind of get lucky with the variegated you know how it how it flows because um, um, this is the ball that I used and um, with our tribe um, it seems as if the color variation isn't um, as standardized as you might have with other variegated um, yarns so you're um, I'm not sure how long the variegation is and this bright yellow I've only had that in this ball and I you know another ball might not have that so um, it depends on the dye lot and um, this actually is my new leaf colorway because uh, the R tribe yarn is actually our blogger yarn uh, so we all got to pick a color which was super exciting um, this all happened several years ago um, but yes it's just really exciting and I thought okay if I'm gonna have a collection with these yarns then I'm gonna have to choose my own colorway new leaf and then of course I need a leaf uh, color work chart pattern so I did that and I think they turned out super cute and again they are toe up with the stripy gusset the short row heel on the heel flap Oh, and the ribbing is twisted one by one ribbing and I have a little pearl row detail right there and the bind off is Lori's twisty bind off which uh, I've heard Caroline mention from the Dunder Knit podcast and uh, I tried it and it's amazing so this is my new favorite bind off for ribbing um, it works for both one by one, two by two, um, so yeah, it's really great. So I used that bind off for all of my socks. This is the third pattern. For this one, I didn't have too much of the pattern color, so I thought, okay, I'll just um, do a color work pattern that uses more of the background color than of the pattern color and I was able to finish um, the whole pair with uh, even extra yarn to spare. And for this um, pair, you see that the background color really lines up beautifully. So here, there appears to be a much shorter um, repeat in the variation. And I... Oh, I just love this one so much. So, um, um, the Metropolis, the solid color one, is called Deepak, and <laughs> Deepak. Um, I'm not sure. They're all names of cities around the world, but um, I don't know how to pronounce this one. And it's colorway number uh, 26. And uh, the background color is Simi 2, because there's also a Simi 1. In, um, in the Art Tribe color range and it's just really really beautiful and this was not as well it's still low contrast but um, I feel like you can see the pattern much better with um, with this color pairing so these three pairs <laughs> I have all finished Ta -da! <laughs> and the fourth pair fourth and last pattern I am working on it right now I am halfway done with the first sock um, I'm up to the heel right now you can see the stripy gusset here. And this, so this background color is Semi 1, which is this. It's almost like a pearlescent color. It's really, really beautiful. Um, uh, 
and this one is Lima, color 55. It's a really beautiful purple. Um, and it's like a mermaidy, unicorny um, color pairing. And the um, color color work chart is um, of a larger and a smaller flower uh, but I think that will show up better when it's blocked yeah this is also very subtle <laughs> and uh, I'm actually excited to see how um, how you guys will knit these patterns um, and if you guys will knit them in you know, more contrasting color combinations because that would be a lot of fun to see how how different they would be. So um, I have four patterns and um, they will be published as an ebook in November. I'm thinking November 2nd because it's a Monday. Um, uh, but we'll see. We'll see about that. And um, they will also be available separately, but only after a couple of months. So I think probably in the new year. So if you want to get them and if you want to knit some socks, um, I don't know if you'll be able to gift knit them. Well, yes, I do. I finished this pair within a weekend. So um, if you get your yarn ready, you can totally knit some pairs for... Um, I'm not going to say <laughs> for the holiday. <laughs> I don't want to trigger anyone by actually saying it. The C word. <laughs> but yes, you can definitely um, still knit these in time to gift. Um, or for yourself. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, I've all knit these for myself. So no judgment so yes I think it, I will publish it uh, at least the first week of November I'm not sure which day and the ebook will be available in my own web shop which is on newleafdesigns.nl and also in Ravelry or via Ravelry yes I'm still selling on Ravelry because I'd be crazy if I took all of my patterns from there because it is the bulk of my income but um, I don't really agree with what um, you know with the actions they took um, earlier this year so I'm taking care that all of my patterns are also available on my um, in my own web shop um, and if I share Ravelry links that I put a little disclaimer on there like I haven't kept up with what changes they've done recently I I've seen they have changed the theme, but um, I can't say if if it is still causing harm. So, so yeah, <laughs> I can't say that. Right, and uh, I was gonna say um, the sock patterns have their own names as well, and I thought uh, to give them nature-inspired names, you know, because you know this one is obvious. There are, they are leaves, and then uh, with this one, you know, I've, I've gone through a naming process, so I'll just uh, tell you the um, final names. And I've chosen to give them Dutch names because I think it would be cute. Um, so, this one, leaf, is called blot because leaf is blot. <laughs> it's it's really difficult switching from English to Dutch without speaking Dutch with an English accent. Blot. <laughs> and then this one, um, I th the color work pattern kind of reminded me of like the wind, of a breeze. So this one is breeze, which is bries in Dutch. And then this one, because they are flowers, uh, this one is called Bloom, which is Bloom in Dutch. And because they all start with a B in Dutch, then um, I kind of had a hard time with this one because, um, yeah, it, um, it reminded me of like stones or pebbles or like marble. 
um, at first, but uh, I couldn't find a Dutch word with a B. Um, and yeah, so in the end I decided on bron, which means source, uh, like a water source, uh, where the water bubbles up. And um, um, the pattern kind of reminds me of the like water reflections that you see if the light hits the water and then you see these kind of diamond shapes twirling and swirling um, so yes this one is called brom so brom bris blot and bloom um, yeah, but don't worry, I'll uh, put the English name on the pattern as well, so you wouldn't have to struggle with that. It's just, you know, I thought I've never given a Dutch name to pattern, so I thought I'd start with that. I'll just uh, give you some extra information for if you're wanting to prepare for the uh, publication of the ebook. Um, for each pair, you will need one or two balls of the solid color for um, like small adult sizes um, like ye, um, European size 35 to like 37 you will uh, just need one ball um, and for uh, larger sizes you will need two balls um, it also depends if you want to um, extend the leg. The legs are quite short, um, but that's because the color work is quite tight. So um, if you want to extend that, then you might need two balls as well. Um, for the background color, you will only need one ball. This is 100 grams and these are 50 grams. Uh, the Metropolis is 75% uh, Merino and 25% Nylon. And the Escapees Art Tribe is 70% Merino uh, Superwash and 30% Polyamide. So the fiber content is very similar, uh, but the Metropolis definitely has some more twist in there. I think the our tribe is even a single ply, um, but it holds well enough for socks. The our tribe yarn is a smidge thinner, but um, I find them to be similar enough um, to use for color work. For the needles, I'm using Chowgu needles because they are my fave. I'm using 2.25 millimeter which is US 1 for the toe and then um, US 1.5 which is 2.5 millimeter for the rest of the sock. So sometimes for the heel I tend to go back to the smaller size but here I just used the bigger size from the toe up. If you want to get a head start, so if you want to practice with color work knitting, I have a color work confidence masterclass on my Patreon page, which I highly recommend. Uh, of course, it's my own masterclass, <laughs> but uh, I highly recommend it, especially if you've never knit color work before, because uh, this might be a little bit too much for a color work beginner. Um, so yes, the color work confidence masterclass on my Patreon page, I'll link it down below. Um, you can get it for as little, little as $5 a month. So, and you can only subscribe for one month and then, you know, watch the videos and then unsubscribe. No hard feelings. Um, but there's lots of other content on there. So I'm sure it will keep you busy for a while. Uh, but yes, in those um, masterclass videos, there are several, I think, you know, I'm not sure of the number, but <laughs> uh, I did the masterclass for a couple of weeks. And then from, from the same membership, you also get the Sweater Cal um, masterclass and many, many other videos. I'll link it down below and I'll <laughs> stop talking about it. Um, but uh, yes, in those videos, uh, I take you through how to knit color work, how to hold your yarns, uh, multiple techniques for that, um, how to choose your colors, because 
is one of the most important things. Um, and I'll give you a few patterns to try. So that might be um, fun to check out first. Also, I've named the um, colorway names in this video, but you are more than welcome to make your own combinations. And I have some Our Tribe and Metropolis in my stash that I'm going to do some other color pairings with right now. Um, so I have this one, which is the colorway Miss Nuris, which is 966, and it's this beautiful baby blue and lilac-y colorway. And you can pair this really easily with this one, for example. This would be a very, um, contrasty pair. Um, this is number one, Bucharest, from Metropolis. Metropolis. Uh, <laughs> seriously, when I'm trying to speak multiple languages at once, it's not good. It's not good. Um, I've considered this one. I'm not sure if it would be too low contrast. Let's actually check that. So, giving you a small tip. You want to take a picture of your yarn and I'm just using the um, Instagram app, the uh, stories at the top left. So I'm taking a picture of the yarn and then if you swipe, um, you can put a filter on it and one of the filter is black and white. I think it's two swipes left. Yeah. So there's not a whole lot of contrast in there. So that might not be a winner, but let's, oh, this one is nice. Okay, I had not considered this pair before, but this is really nice. I've almost finished this ball. Look at that. That would be beautiful, and for this one, I am certain that the color is contrasting enough. And this one might be fun as well. It uh, will be more contrasting with this uh, part and less contrasting with this part. But that makes it fun. I think that, um, you know, high and low contrast uh, difference makes it really um, dynamic. Um, no, I do not want to post that. Okay, so that was Miss Nurse. Miss Nurse. <laughs> uh, with, I forgot to show you this one. This one is Boston, number 11, and Bogota, number 50. Then, um, this one, Felted Button which is 965. It's such a beautiful colorway, but it has a lot of different colors. So it might be difficult to pair. See, it even has yellow in there and some kind of dark purple. Well, not really dark, medium purple. Uh, so it might be difficult to choose a color pairing for this. Um, See, I think this one would not be contrasting, so either don't use this. Uh, like you can start from the center and then it might be okay. This is uh, Johannesburg, by the way, 54. Um, or this one would be really nice. This one is uh, Santiago. Um, mm, I want to say colorway number 51, but I'm not sure. Um, that would be fun. Or even, no, no, no. Ah, it's all a bit too dark, perhaps. Yeah, so, but there are a lot of options. Because 
the Metropolis yarn comes in 80 colors, so there are a lot of options, just not in my stash. And then the, um, uh, this is Hack Marak. I'm not sure, oh wait, I have the website up here. Um, this is 963 uh, Hack Marak, and it has pastel red and um, orange and yellow in there. And I had paired that with this one because I think that would be beautiful. So also um, 50 Bogota. Um, maybe not. Um, yes, but <laughs> there are a lot of combinations to make. And um, for this one, you know, it isn't very contrasting here. So I might want to pair this with a darker shade of purple for another pair. So this is um, Bucharest. Um, that might be really beautiful and uh, this seems to be the darkest um, area in this uh, yarn so that would work with this one to make it a little bit more contrasting because you know I love low contrast but um, especially for a beginner um, color work knitters I wouldn't especially recommend it because you know you really need a light <laughs> sometimes you know I've been knitting these socks in the evening when I'm sitting on the couch the lighting isn't that great and like yeah I don't really see this so I'm just counting uh, I'm counting my stitches and by a miracle it all goes well but um, yes more contrast is also easier so just um, you can customize it however you want but I'm just giving you the options so is there anything else I can say about this oh right I had one more tip uh, for the color work uh, because um, it works better in my experience if the R tribe color that you use, so the background color, is lighter than the Metropolis. I found that gives the um, nicest result. So, because I had cast on one pair that has a light solid color and then a darker background color but I don't know for some reason it just didn't work so that would be my tip for um, choosing color pairing right I think I'm going to leave it at that and also because my camera is overheating <laughs> um, so I will be finishing this pair and please keep an eye out um, on my social media channels, my Facebook, Instagram, and also my newsletter if you want to be one of the first to know about when the collection goes live. Um, because that's not something that I post on YouTube. So if you want to stay in the loop about that, um, then go ahead, go ahead and follow me on Instagram or subscribe to my newsletter because then you'll be the first to know. I hope you're as excited as I am and I'm really really looking forward to all of the versions that you will knit. Um, yes, so I will see you next time. I hope that I will be podcasting soon again about my sweater <laughs> uh, and I hope I'll finish it by then. And yes, please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and go ahead and watch my other videos. I have lots of videos on here, vlogs, podcast episodes, tutorial videos. Thank you all so much for watching. A special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.